So, President Trump. Yeah, I know. It's real. It happened. I watched with increasing frustration, disbelief, disgust, insert every other negative adjective you want into there as it happened. But it happened, and that's life. Where are we now, huh? Well, unless you're on that side of this fence that agrees with the vitriolic beliefs of Trump and his cabinet, the basket of deplorables. We all have to sort of get together now and do something. Mike Pence, Steve Bannon, Trump himself have all said and advocated for things that are destructive to whole groups of people. Discriminatory isn't even the word. Destructive is the word. When you have people like Mike Pence out there talking about, you know, gay conversion therapy, and you have people like Bannon out there, which just do the research. I can't even do that fucker justice. What are we going to do, though? Us who are on the side of, you know, reasonableness here and not hating people just for who they are. Well, resist. We need to make this not effective. Yes, he's the president. We can say, not my president and all that, and I'm all for that. But at the same time, he still has that power. He still has that legislative ability. And he still has a House and a Senate that, while pretty ineffective, are Republican-controlled right now. And we'd all better be ready for things that are not good to come out of this. And resistance is step one. There are plenty of other steps. There are plenty of things we should be doing. And there's going to be links and stuff in the description below about other things you can donate to and look into to see about activism and all of that. And I encourage you to do that. But step one, you have to find it in yourself to be a good enough person if you aren't one of the directly affected here to resist for them. If you are one of the directly affected, of course you should be resisting. If you're a part of the LGBT spectrum or some other minority that is targeted by any one of these fuckers in there, well then of course resistance is obvious. But even if you're not, even if you are, let's just say, you know, cis, white, male, of some privilege and everything, well, you know somebody who is going to be targeted by this. Even if you don't know that you know them, you do. Someone in your life, probably somebody close to you, will be disadvantaged by these policies if they happen. And so, resistance is something we should all do. If not for you yourself, then for the people you care about. Or how about your fellow human beings that are, you know, human beings and like you and feel pain and if you prick us do we not bleed we all have an obligation to our fellow people to stand up against injustice and so what does that entail what is what do i mean when i say resistance well two foot two specific things active and passive resistance the easier one to do and i'll start with that is passive resistance it's where you simply do not do things that are disadvantaging people or hurting them. If you're, you know, part of a job of some government place and a law gets passed that lets you, you know, choose to discriminate against gay people, just not grant them a marriage license or something, don't do that. Don't be a part of that. Continue to do that. Continue to give the licenses. If you have to quit your job, well, that's a personal decision to make, but Honestly, if your job requires you to harm and discriminate against whole groups of people simply for who they are, well then, I think it would behoove you to find a new career because, well, I don't think that's conscionable. Resistance in that case becomes refusing to participate in a system that hurts and abuses and discriminates against people for no valid reason. That's passive resistance, just not partaking in it, not participating in it, not it, at its simplest level, it's not simply joining a chant of build the wall or some stupid bullshit. Don't join it. Don't be a part of it. That's passive resistance. Active resistance, the harder one, but the more impactful one, is where you actively stand up against these things. You protest. We see a lot of this already happening all across America. People protesting, saying, not my president, not on my watch, whatever hashtag phrase you want to use. But it all amounts to roughly the same thing, which is... We will not stand for this, and we are letting this be known. That is active resistance. It's where, to use a perfect example that I've seen floating around on Facebook, if they start requiring Muslims to register, the first 8,000 people in line had better be white. You see discrimination happen, you call it out, you stop it, you stand up to it. You see somebody harassing a Muslim person on the bus simply because they're Muslim, you say no. 
this is not what we are about here. Because as far as, I don't know, last I checked, America was supposed to be this whole land of opportunity for freedom and, you know, religious freedom, for economic freedom, for the opportunity to move up in life and not be judged based on your beliefs or your skin color, but on what you do as a person and what you make of yourself. Isn't there's this thing, it's written on the Statue of Liberty. Let me let me think a minute here, because, you know, we've tarnished that shit pretty good. But give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. There's a reason that that's written on there, because America was supposed to be a land of hope for the dispossessed, a land of opportunity for people who had been denied opportunity. Not, it, but right now, what are we doing? What, what are we seeing happening? A denial of these very core ideas of what America was built to be, what it was built upon. This whole glorious idea of a free republic governed by the masses for the masses in the interest of the masses. Where we could individually and collectively attain some form of satisfaction and happiness based on the merits of our own work. But you can go ahead and shit on all of that if you want people on the other side of this argument and claim that this is a Christian white whatever fucking place you want to pretend that it was considering most of the founding fathers were deists at best Freemasons you know or atheists altogether but right now for the rest of us resistance which can take the form of pointing out facts like I just someone comes up and says this is white Christian America Kindly let them know about the true history a little bit if you're educated on the matter. Use information against disinformation. Fight bigotry with education, with shaming, because social shaming is a powerful tool, by the way. And also fight the call for unity. That might sound weird, but when you have the people on the victorious side of this who have advocated for the wholesale elimination more or less of whole groups of people with if you want to tell me that conversion therapy is not basically a form of genocide against gay people well then I don't know tell you <laughs> but when you come up against that sort of thing you have a choice to make it's a very simple clear stark choice do you allow this to happen or not and if you're one of the affected you don't get a choice. You will be targeted by this. Don't be against your own best interest here. Don't think, oh, well, Trump and Pence might be against, you know, me being gay or whatever, but their economic policy... No, no, stop. Because fuck the economic policies when it comes down to it. Your life is kind of more important. Your identity is more important than his economic policies. Who fucking cares if his economic policies are great if part of that is predicated on the wholesale destruction of an entire group of people simply for the crime of choosing to exist. No economic policy should be worth that. So again, resist in whatever way you're capable of. If you can't quit your job because you'll be homeless but your job is built around that sort of thing, I understand it. You can't. There's no reason to throw yourself to the wolves completely and die of starvation trying to make a point. Resistance is a lot of things. Part of it, though, is showing kindness and empathy to the people that are being hurt. If you're not targeted, one of the biggest acts of resistance you can possibly do is extend a hand out to the people that are targeted and say, I am not affected by this, and I am still against it. Because that no longer can be dismissed as simple self-interest. Oh, these groups are just protesting because they have special rights. I'm sure you've heard that. But no, if a privileged white person stands up for the black people, guess what? It suddenly changes the argument a little bit. If everybody stands up for everybody else, if you have straight people stand up for gay people, you have gay people stand up for trans people. You have white people stand up for black people. You have everybody stand up for everybody else. Then it becomes an interlocking shield. Everybody resists the discrimination against everybody else. And suddenly, you're not a group of minorities. Not anymore. You're now an army. <laughs> and suddenly, 
You have to be taken seriously when you move in lockstep like that. When everybody resists attacks against anybody, nobody gets attacked because everybody responds. Imagine a world like that. Everybody resisting every effort to discriminate against anybody for unvalid reasons. All of a sudden, dare I say it, you'd have a happy free world. And it could start right here, right now, with people saying no more. Use this as your battle cry, your clarion call, if you will, to say, we've accepted discrimination, hatred, bigotry, and ignorance for far too long, and it has culminated with this. No more. We can stop this, and we can stop this right now, with each of us saying, no. It's that simple.